The Lord be with you. It is a good day, and it's a beautiful day outside. What more could we ask? And the farmers are getting the crops in in good time, so that's good. So God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 Pray for rain. Pray for rain, yes. After they get harvested, then we pray for rain. That's why my friends, my farmer friends say, don't pray for rain yet. (laughs) A little later. Okay, there's a number of announcements. Some of them are in your bulletin there about the Richfield Clothing Mission. Uh, Please continue to donate to that and also the Christmas bundles that are back there. Uh, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, uh, this is something that keeps going. And, uh, you know, we get excited about these disasters for a few weeks, and then it goes off our radar screens, but the people are still there. They're still suffering, and the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is still there. Matter of fact, years ago, we did a mission to New Orleans a year after Katrina, and one of the things about the people there said, the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance stayed with us. And we saw signs all over New Orleans saying, thank you, PDA. So let's give and share. Uh, Jane Junkard is having a 25th birthday. (laughs) No. (laughs) That's pretty good, Jane. uh, They always watch this online, so happy birthday to you. And we know it's not, it's a little more than 25, but whatever it is, happy birthday to you. And... Pastor Bob has gone for another week. He's out in Vermont. So if you have a concern, please give me a call or at any time. And you're, you're welcome to do that. Now, this morning, we have a number of people in our worship team. Jerry and Jim and Lorraine and Judy and Phyllis, who are Phyllis's reading. So we, we're thankful for them. And there will be no coffee this morning downstairs. So, so we'll just have fellowship around here. That's good. Any other announcements that I have failed to make that you would like to share? If not, Phyllis, come up and share with us. Good morning. If you will stand, please. And join me in the call to worship. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The The old old has gone gone away, away. the The new new has come. come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to God through Christ. We receive God's God's ministry of reconciliation reconciliation and commit to spreading spreading the message. As God counts not our sins against us, neither do we count others' sins against them. We are, we are therefore, therefore Christ's ambassadors, as God makes an appeal through us. Let us worship God. And please join us in the opening hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, and Happy Birthday, Jane!
seated. Actually, it says here that we should stand for the <laughs> prayer of confession. Will you read with me, please, the, pr the prayer of confession? O oh Lord our God, you are wise. You know our thoughts before we reveal them to you. You know our joys and fears before we name them to you. You offer us mercy while we cringe at the expectation of judgment and punishment. In spite of our weakness, our failures, our doubts, you invite us into your presence. Knowing we are in your presence, we confess our sins before you. Will you take a few moments of your silent personal confession? From John 14, 27, Jesus shared these words of good news. I leave behind with you peace. I give you my own peace, and my gift is nothing like the peace of this world. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And let us now remain standing and sing hymn number 482, Sanctuary. scripture readings this morning. Our first reading is from Joel, cap chapter 2, verses 23 through 29, on pages 733 in your pew Bible. Okay. Chapter 2. Verses 23 through 29. There it is. Do not fear, O soul. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O oh, children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten the hopper, the destroyer, the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God for who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other and my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards, 
I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves on, in these days, I will pour out my spirit. And from Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing off, far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful, merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt, who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Excuse me, Phyllis, thank you for uh, sharing your, the word this morning. Before we share in the sermon, let us pray together. <clears throat> Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that you are with us. We thank you for your word, both from the Old Testament and New Testament. It gives us instruction and help us to hear, Lord, as we listen to this sermon, as we reflect on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Excuse my, my voice, I think these fall allergies are striking again. So pray for me, we'll get through it. No, it's okay. It's good to have a wife who thinks about you, right? <clears throat> you know, I was reminded this week, as I did this sermon, that there are days when we wake up and we say, Good morning, Lord. Good morning, God. And then some days we wake up and say, good God, it's morning. <laughs> you know, we, that happens, doesn't it? It's kind of the dual nature of our lives. When we wake up some morning and everything, the sun is shining and everything is good and the car starts and no problem and all this stuff, and we just feel blessed. We go to bed blessed. Then we wake up that other morning where it's good God, it's morning. And everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. <clears throat> and then at the end of the day, we drop into bed and say, I'm wretched. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm blessed at all. So these are two natures, two pockets of our spiritual natures. And this good morning and bad mornings uh, kind of epitomizes that. That there are times in our lives where it's good. There are times when it's tough. And my friends... This human existence that we call ourselves has those natures within us every day. And sometimes we call that the saint and the sinner. The Jewish theologian Martin Buber explained it this way. When we reach into one pocket, we pull out smallness. We are nothing but dust and ashes. If we reach into our other spiritual pocket, however, we extract greatness. For our sake, the universe was created. Think about that. For our, that's, that's the psalmist saying that. For our sake, the universe was created. I recently was amazed again by these new astronomical discoveries. <clears throat> you know now what they, how many planets that they've dis, they figure is in our, not solar system, but universe. How many planets? One trillion, one trillion planets. And, you know, we could rightfully say with the psalmist, Oh God, 
Who are we that you are mindful of us? We are just little things here in this vast ocean of the universe. Who are we that you're mindful of us? Or sometimes we can go to bed and we say, we're created a little lower than the angels. That's good. We're created good. And so as we look at this parable today of the Pharisee and the tax collector, I love this parable. You know, it's, it's Jesus had just this amazing ability to just frame the story in a few lines. Two, two men went up to pray in the temple. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Two men went to the temple. Both were praying. One was a Pharisee, one was a tax collector. My friends, it could be, there could be no greater singling out of people than those two men. And we can often call that the saint and the sinner. The Pharisee. Now, the Pharisee has gotten a bad rap, I'll tell you. You know, a lot of preachers today and a lot of uh, theologians give the Pharisee a tough time, and they should. But we fail to say that the Pharisees was the renewal movement within the Jewish faith of Jesus' time. They're the ones who believed in the resurrection. They're the ones who practiced the teaching. They're the ones who, who held to that strict obeyance of the Torah. The Torah that showed, tell, told them detailed about what to do. The Pharisees, that Pharisee, could look at the tax collector and say, Lord, I'm not like that. But you know what the Jewish leaders, I mean the, the rabbis would say in their prayer? Oh, God, I thank you for not creating me a tax collector or a woman. <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies. <laughs> so the Pharisee didn't go quite that far. But the Pharisees looked over and said, you know, thank you, God. I'm not like that person. And you know something? He wasn't. He wasn't like that person. Now, he was vain and he was righteous and all this stuff. To go in, but he d lived his life differently than that guy. So the Pharisee has gotten a bad press sometimes. But we also know that the tax collector wasn't a nice guy. You see, the tax collectors collected taxes from the Roman authorities. And how he made his money was he collected more than what was required from the government. Can you, can you imagine the IRS agents? The way they got paid is collect more than what they're supposed to. They, they were not liked. They were bad people. And besides that, there were turncoats. They were Jews exploiting Jews. It was not good. So the Pharisee could look at the tax collector and say, Oh, God, thank you that you didn't create me like that person. Now, I'll leave out the women, okay? I won't talk about that. My friends... Martin Luther put it like this. He says, both saint and sinner together. God has made us good, a little lower than the angels. And we know that we have also all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So to experience the transforming power of God's forgiveness, we need to recognize that we have two pockets in our spiritual natures. My friends, the Pharisee, and the tax collector, both made a mistake. You see, both of them centered on one or the other, on either the saint or the sinner. And what Martin Luther is saying, and many others, is they made a mistake because within us is the saint and the sinner. God created us good, so we have the saint side within us, but also we have the sinner side. So we live with that every day. So I, I kind of try to figure out practical ways that we can think about this. And I think the environmentalist movement has a pretty good slogan. It says, think globally, act locally. Think globally about all the things that are going on, but then act locally because then we get something done. 
Because we look at the world today, and we know that we could no way solve all the world's problems. Globally, it's tough. But we know locally, we could do something about our communities. Maybe we can't change everything within that com our community, but we could change some things in our neighborhood. And maybe even we can't change everything in our neighborhood, but we can change things in our personal relationships. Or maybe not even all of those. But with God's help, we can change. We can have a different view of the world. My friends, we're saints and we're sinners. We have those two within us. So think globally and act locally. One of the worst things that could do, that could happen, is that we could get so overwhelmed by all the problems that we do nothing. That's the worst thing, is good people doing nothing. My friends, we have that opportunity every day. And I was thinking of a story, true story, about a Frenchman by the name of Elziad Bouffier. And Bouffier lived during the First World War. And he lived in, in the area of France, southern France, where the mountains and the meadows came together. And before the war, that area was a beautiful place with green grass and trees and all kinds of wonderful ways that you could be blessed. And then what happened during the First World War is the tanks and the, everything, the trucks and everything ran over and totally deforested it and ruined the landscape. And so Bouffier lost his son and his wife to the war. And then after the war was over, he wanted some place where he could be alone. So he took his little flock of sheep and he went to that area. But all of a sudden he realized there wasn't much for them to eat, so he had to move them from one place to the next. And as he went about being a shepherd, he realized that the problem with the area were there were no trees. So it wasn't stopping the water, it wasn't stopping the erosion, all the other things going on. So he decided that he would plant trees. And he had a pouch that he carried seeds in. And he'd walk with his shepherd, and he'd take his shepherd's crook and push it into the ground, and he'd drop a seed in. And in this one time after another. And he figured he could drop 1,000 seeds a day as he walked. He did that for 50 years. 50 years. One after another. And within that time, the forest started to grow back, the grass started to come back, and it started being a productive land again. But think about that. Just one seed after another. My friends, I think about that as a great analogy of what we could do. You know, just drop in a seed. It will grow. Drop in a seed as we interact with people who are in need. Just a seed, clothing mission, Christmas mission, Presbyterian disaster assistance. All those ways are dropping in a seed. When we look at globally, it's overwhelming. But let's not get there. Let's drop in a seed. Whether it is standing beside somebody in need or just being there when a person needs a shoulder. Let's drop a seed in. And God will bring about the harvest. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen. Now we're going to sing I Love to Tell the Story, number 560. Yeah. 
story it will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell a story it is pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell Some have never heard the message of salvation in God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glory. The old, old story of Jesus. story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing a new, new song, it will be the old, old story. story it will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love let us pray <clears throat> oh God thank you for your great love for us thank you that you have made us good and thank you, Lord, that you stand beside us to go through life even though we fail and we do the things that we really don't even want to do at times. We live with those two natures, Lord, and we don't always know which one is right. But we ask your help as we live out our faith every day. We know that we live in difficult times. We pray for our leaders that they will make loving and compassionate decisions decisions that will bless people. We pray that you will lead us in our decisions as we vote, as we cast those votes that will determine who will lead us. We pray for your guidance. Strengthen our church and all churches, Lord, to share your love, to share in ways that will truly be a blessing. And thank you for all the people who give their time and resources in this church in ways that they serve you in small and big ways. Because we do pray for our world. We know that our world is part of your creation. So we pray that you will help us, Lord, as these terrible things are going on right now, that we'll be consistent in prayer and we'll drop in the seeds that will grow and flourish. Lord, we thank you that we can also bring before you specific needs. We pray for Marion and Randy as they heal. We pray for Phyllis and Merv, for John, for Bob and Sharon, Lord, for Andrew. We pray for our members and friends who have gone south. We pray that you'll bless them with safety and help. And now during this time, we lift up others to you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, not just these that we say out loud, but those deep in our hearts. We know that you answer. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please, ushers, please bring forward the morning offering. <laughs> give you thanks for the many, many ways that you bless us. But we know that we're blessed to be a blessing to others. So we pray that you will receive these offerings today and the offering of our lives to go out to be your people, to share your joy, and to help others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Our final hymn is We Have Heard the Joyful Sound, number 554, number 554. sound Jesus saves Jesus saves spread the tidings all around Jesus saves Jesus saves bear the news to every land climb the steeps and cross the waves onward tears our Lord's command Jesus saves Jesus saves Sin. say amen to that, right? Jesus saves. Amen. And Judy, thanks for leading us in that. Wonderful. As we go from this place of worship, God sends us out to be God's people, to drop in seeds wherever we go. May God go with us and help us to do that mission. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all the people said, amen. and they said, Jesus saves. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. 